In this lecture, I'll be talking a little bit more about services. Pods are very dynamic. They come and go on the Kubernetes cluster. When using a replication controller, pods are terminated and created during scaling operations. When using deployments, when updating the image version, for instance, pods are terminated and new pods take the place of older pods. That's why pods should never be accessed directly, but always through a service. A service is the logical bridge between the mortal pods and other services or end users. When using the kubectl expose command earlier, you created a new service for your pods so that it could be accessed externally. Creating a new service will create an endpoint for your pods. You can either use a cluster IP, which is a virtual IP only reachable from within the cluster. This is the default. Or you can use a node port. And that is a port that is the same on each node that is also reachable externally. If you want to reach your pods externally, this is what you need. Or you can go for a load balancer, and this is used for production applications on the cloud. A load balancer is created by the cloud provider that will route external traffic to every node on the node port. I showed you how this works. I did that using ELB, Elastic Load Balancer, on AWS. The options that I just showed you only allow you to create virtual IPs or ports. There is also a possibility to use DNS names. If you use external name in the service definition, you can provide a DNS name for the service. For instance, for service discovery using DNS. This only works when the DNS add-on is enabled. I will discuss this later in a separate lecture. I'm going to talk about service discovery and I will then talk also about this DNS add-on. This is an example of a service definition. You could also create the same service using kubectl expose. It does the same thing. It has API version one. The kind is service. It has a name. The name is hello world service. And in the specification, we're going to define the port. So the port that we're going to use is 31001 and it's going to be a node port. So you see at the bottom here, this service is of type node port. The target port is a Node.js port. So this name Node.js port I defined in my pod and this is port 3000. The protocol is TCP and the selector is app hello world. So this will be the service for the pod that has the label app hello world. You don't have to specify this node port. If you don't specify it, then it will be a random port. If you specify it, then this port will be used but this service can only be created if this port is still available. So you will have to manage port collisions yourself. Also note that by default, services can only run between ports 30,000 and 32,767. But you could change this behavior by adding the service node port range argument to the kube API server. Kube API server is a process that starts so in the init scripts of your master node, you could change this service node port range if you would want another range for ports. You would then have to make sure that you don't have collisions with ports that are already used on the node. Typically, this is already a good setting. What you're going to do is if, let's say you want to use a default HTTP port, then you're just going to put an AWS load balancer in front of it. In the next demo, I'm going to create this service of type node port.